I was up all night watching the election results and getting drunk, so that's why this is coming out in the afternoon, not the middle of the night. Not everything's called yet, and I hope the Democrats will take every undecided slot, but that's a fool's hope. I'd probably have a better chance staging a prison break. Fortuitous, ain't it? I'm Gayfish, and today we'll be talking Star Wars Andor Season 1, Episode 10, One Way Out. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Spoilers ahead. Before we talk about the big event itself, let's tiptoe around the margins and look at some of the other characters. On Ferrix, it looks like Marva is not taking the meds her doctor prescribed her because it affects her appetite. Those closest to her seem concerned about it, and so does Cinta. On Coruscant, Mon Mothma meets with Davos Skulden, the thug she had apprehensions about when Tay mentioned him. He is perfectly happy to help Mon Mothma get her money out, so long as she engages in the Chandrillan custom of arranged marriages and betroths her daughter to his son. She says absolutely not and walks out. I'm sure that's the end of that plotline, no chance something comes up. The ISB is preparing to entrap some rebels after they captured a rebel pilot and staged an accident to make it look like the pilot died in a gas leak or something. But we find out that a member of the ISB named Lonnie is in fact part of the rebellion and has been working his way up the ISB for years to assist them. But he now has a child and he tells Luthen he wants out after informing him of the plot involving the rebel pilot. Luthen says he'll let the rebels lured in by the plot die, because to do otherwise might reveal Lori as a spy, and so he is more valuable to the rebellion than 50 men. Luthen won't let him out, and suddenly threatens his family in order to keep him as an asset. He gives a big speech about everything he has sacrificed, but I think he's really just trying to keep Lori as an asset because Lori has told him that the ISB is looking into him. And now to the prison. I'm not gonna get too into the details, they aren't that important in a review. The real takeaway is that there is a big, proper prison break led by Cassian and Supreme Leader Snoke's reincarnation, Kino Loy. Breaking open a water pipe to short out the floor was a great move, and seeing Kino change from wanting to keep his head down and finish his time to commanding the entire prison of 5,000 inmates to rise up and break out, ooh, nice. Remember folks, there are more of us than there are of them. The episode has a bittersweet ending. As they reach the top of the prison and jump out to the water below, Kino says he can't swim. We don't see his fate after Andor jumps and swims to shore, but I have to imagine anyone who didn't get out is going to be killed. So, all my viewers, let's pour one out. Of course, Cassian's still on the planet, barefoot running through the woods, so he quite literally is not out of the woods yet. Leave a comment letting me know how you think he'll make it out next week. Mod Mothma's storyline is starting to feel a little too Game of Thrones for me. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video with your friends. Subscribe to my Patreon to get shouted out in future videos. Check out my Bandcamp for banging tunes, including all the tracks you heard in this video. Follow me on Twitter at GayestFesh, and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Rest of Both Worlds, where I go through Star Trek The Next Generation with a friend who's never seen it. Thank you to all my patrons, with a special shout out to Piftle Cakes and Renee Vorbeck. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you all in the next video.